Welcome to our 30 minute yoga practice for the longest week of your life. At least that's what it feels like to me. So I figured I'd film a video teaching you some yoga poses to feel a little bit more restored and settled after long days, long weeks, or even you know, upcoming long months ahead. Hopefully, as we start to shift and we get used to all of these changes, a new normal settles in. But at first, the days can seem extra long. So this is that practice to help you out with that. My name is Ashley from Ashes Yoga and Ashes Yoga Studio. You can find more about my virtual classes and other things at ashesyoga.com or ashesyogastudio.com. Let's get started. I've got a couple of blocks. You don't need blocks. You could use something else. You could use boxes of food or <laughs> cans of pop or soda or something if you want for that grounded, something to bring the floor a little higher for you. I also have a couple blankets. You do not need them to be this style of blanket. They can be any kind of cozy blankets that you choose. And I also have this lovely bolster. No, you do not need to go out and purchase a big bolster but a regular pillow would be fine. Firmer is better, but either way, as long as you have something that just lifts you up a little bit, even a rolled up blanket could work too. Because we're starting a little bit overwhelmed, maybe drained, lack of energy, I do have our affirmation of the day as well that I wanna discuss and tell you about. This one is, if you can see it, I am resilient. I am resilient. What is that? I have the power to bounce back from any situation. So whatever is happening, remember, I am, you are resilient. We are all resilient and we're all going to pull through this, hopefully stronger at the end. So having learned a few lessons, let's remind ourselves that this time is what's making us stronger. And maybe not physically, maybe we're being a little bit more restful, but at the same time, mentally, we'll figure out how to deal with any challenges that arise. We do that in our yoga practice, we also do that in our life. So let's start in our first pose, and these will be a little bit longer holding and close to the ground. So turning towards your bolster, your block, or your blanket. The first pose that we were heading into is child's pose. So take your knees as wide as you would like, sit back on the heels, blanket, no blanket, cushions or no cushions. We're gonna take our arms forward and rest our forehead or our chest or our belly onto the bolster. So just keeping us up a little bit higher. Whatever way feels good for you, I like to rest my forehead down. If you want to take one cheek to the blanket or bolster or ground, you can always turn about halfway through and I'll remind you of when that is. So let's just take it down and start to notice your breath and your body, allowing distractions, the world, chaos, the recent crazy, to leave the mind to make space for calm, peace, and resiliency. Feel a settling of your bones and muscles. No effort as we rest here. Can you find any areas in your body you're holding on to a little bit of clenching or tightness? And then can you relax them? It's common in the shoulders, the neck, the jaw, forehead.
If at any time you want to move or make an adjustment, please do. You're not stuck to any one place. And we want this practice to be extra comfortable and cozy. So even if you wanted to wrap up in a blanket here, or in some way, just relax and allow yourself to be present. Take those modifications. And if you had one cheek or one side of your head on the ground or on your props, switch sides so the opposite is on your props or the floor. Find a bit more heaviness, more sinking into your mat, into the earth. This child's pose is not feeling so good sitting on the heels. You can take a blanket or something else in between the calves and the hamstrings. And we're going to slowly make our way out. So lift up onto your elbows, press up onto your hands, and take your time. Be very patient with your movement, not just the poses, but the movement too, the in-between, very special. So let's come to a seated pose. And to get comfortable, you might wanna sit on a blanket or a bolster. In fact, I'm gonna sit on my, on my blanket today because it helps to elevate the knees so that the hips are comfortable as we take some gentle movement for the upper body. So very simple movement, meditative movement, just to get this section from the neck down to the hips moving and feeling good. Because there's a lot of tightness that start, can start to occur in the shoulders, the chest, the lower back, maybe even the hips. So as we move and side to side, you'll feel a little uh, openness start to occur through those hips. So let's take the hands down into your lap, palms facing up. Simple breath-based movement. As you inhale, draw those hands up to shoulders, giving yourself life, filling yourself up. Exhale, palms pressing down as you send the energy down and the air out the nose. Exhale. Again, like a very slow elevator rising up the body. Exhale, soften even more as you lower those hands. Shoulders down away from the ears. Two more, deep breath in. Exhale out. Last one. Exhale out. Walk the hands gently over to the right side. Left hand on the knee, right hand at the base of the back. Sit a little bit taller and look past that right shoulder. Good 
Let's bring it to the other side, walk the hands around, a simple twist to the other side. No pressure on that hand that's on the knee. Just leave it resting, sitting up tall. And then walk it over to the center again. And then simple seated cat and cow. Reach your arms forward, hug the belly and the chest in. Then open wide, reaching back. I don't want this practice to be too much of an energizing opening practice, but I do want us to move through the spine a bit. Gain some space and some strength in this section from your neck to your hips. That's where our heart, our lungs, our, all of our important, very, very vital organs are housed. So creating some movement and massage in that area, good for our lives. Good. Now bring it back to just a neutral pose and do a little bit of movement. It might be in the shoulders, the head, the neck, before we come down to our next pose. And so this next one, I'll give you plenty of options. It's a hip opener. We've got two sides. It's pigeon pose, either seated, lying down, or uh, kneeling. So I'll give you those options here now. Uh, we've got blankets, we've got bolsters. Those are mostly for, let's say, forehead support. The blankets will be great underneath your legs. So I'll show you what we could do. Number one, lying on the ground. Take a figure four here and grab onto that uh, the leg that's extended, the thigh or the shin, and pull back towards you. This might feel good. You could stay here for a little while. You could also be seated, straight leg or bent knee, lean forward and hold. Another way to go at this is your kneeling pigeon. So one leg in front of you, knee bent, shin across, leg across the mat. Lengthen the other leg behind you, extend it behind you. Got to get set up here. Perhaps a blanket under that bent knee side. And crawl down. I like this version as long as you can feel kind of cozy up here because you can allow your forehead to come down to a block or the ground. So you're going to pick a version that works for you and you can pick one side and then we'll switch to the other so it doesn't matter if it's right or left. But we do want to feel sensation. Feel the hips start to come alive and these ones are ones are is, a, is an area of our body that is um, tends to be tighter. It takes a long time to tighten but a long a long time to loosen and also a long time to tighten because it's such large area of the body. And it's said that the, the hips are the emotional centers of our bodies. So that means you might be sensing something coming up or welling up while in these poses, these kinds of poses. And this pressure point in between the eyebrows, that third eye center, can be a place that helps to dissipate that tension in the hips. It's a pressure point. Helps to calm and relax as well. So whether you are seated or lying down or in this kneeling pose, bring your awareness back to your breath what you're feeling here and now.
Let's make your way out of this and onto the other side. So as you press yourself up or lift back up or roll to your side, one inch at a time with that movement. You're gonna come out of it, finding your way back to a seated pose. Straighten that knee that was bent and give it a little wiggle. Shake it out. Every pose that we do, every moment in our lives is temporary. So we're able to shake it off. As the great Taylor Swift once said, shake it off after or during. Give a little massage, get into those legs. <laughs> and let's switch sides. So finding your way to the other side, and you might do a different version or variation compared to what you just did. Uh, depends on um, the openness of each side. One side might be different or even knee pain. Any knee pain, stay out of it. This should not be painful at all. So let's find that version of figure four or pigeon pose, either lying on your back, seated, or kneeling like I am here. And then crawling down to where it's comfortable. You can rest, even can rest a little bit on that, the, the hip, or you can lift a little bit to rest onto the side or keep extending the leg, either the forehead down or the cheek, the side of the face. Each breath you take, think of it like a drop of water in the Grand Canyon. Not one drop did it take to form the Grand Canyon. In fact, it took many, many and many years. Just like our breath in and out is a single drop. So use each breath like those drops of water, knowing that in time, we can create some openness, some space where there once was stuck areas. And knowing that, trusting the process, see if we can get a little bit softer. Sometimes it takes us allowing ourselves to slow down in order to fully reap the benefits of everything we've created and done over the past week, our longest week of our lives. Perhaps here express some gratitude. Gratitude for this past week, today, what's one, two, maybe three things, people or events or instances where you can feel grateful towards. slowly making your way back up 
rolling to your side or unraveling the legs. Bring the back leg around, straighten out that bent knee side. Give it a little shake, a little massage or pound through the thigh and quads. All right, we're gonna roll down and you will need either a blanket, a bolster, something that can help elevate your hips so that we can get into a very slight, maybe small back bend. A heart opener, so we're saving this one towards the end because first we release. <laughs> release everything, all the chaos, all the crazy, and then we can find a little space to make us feel open and alive, to continue to Find that resilience, that power to bounce back. So let's be, let's find our openness. We're gonna come down to our backs. And I'm gonna take a block, or no, not a block, a blanket. And today my back bend is very small. I don't want a lot of openness. So my back bend today is a blanket underneath my lower back. If you want a pillow under your head or blankets underneath your arms, awesome. And I'm also going to, and you can as well, take the feet together and open the knees. So I have just this tiny little arch here in the middle of the back. Rest your hands wherever comfortable. It could even be above the head or next to your sides or on your belly to feel your breath. Close your eyes and settle in. The practice of letting go does not mean to stop thinking. Rather, it means that any thoughts that come into your mind in this moment, allow them to pass in and then out without attachment. So our goal here is not to stop thinking. That's never the goal in our meditation or yoga practices. Instead, it's to stay present and allowing those fluctuations to arise and then release. Yoga is a practice of the cessations of the fluctuations of the mind. So we're just slowing down. One way to do that is to slow down the breath. When you slow down your breath, you slow down your thoughts. You're welcome to stay here as long as you would like. If in time you feel the need or desire to head to more of a relaxed Shavasana or a legs up the wall or something that's gonna give you a little bit more relaxation, please come into that pose. Oftentimes it's legs long, feet out, palms up and lying flat. But since I have this this lovely poof here, I'm gonna use that, you could use a chair, to put my legs up even more. This is just gonna allow for a little bit more stimulation of blood flow to relax my body. 
legs up the wall or just legs up on a chair. And on something like this, I'm able to just allow my knees to open without effort so I don't have to engage any part of my body. So you can do this against a couch, a chair, or, <laughs> or really anything. Stack up a bunch of blankets to get those legs up and it feels awesome. So feeling those legs completely relax, hands resting, where is most comfortable for you by your side. Feel your body melt into the earth. No effort with the breath, the body, or holding on to those thoughts. The day is done. We don't hold on or attach to events, conversations, or arguments. Instead, we let go to create the space we need for positive energetic connections.
all right? And if you are ready or you would like to come out of this position, this relaxation, please start to breathe a little deeper, wiggle those fingers and toes. But as always, you are welcome to stay here as long as you'd like, either ignoring me or just shutting me off so that you can find a little more relaxation, maybe even like 30 minutes longer if you had the choice. But if you're getting up with me, go ahead and stretch your arms out. Give yourself a big hug. Thanking yourself for making it to your mat today for this very, in a different way, energizing, re-energizing practice. You can push aside any props you might have. Roll to your side. Take a deep breath there. And then press back up to your seated pose. I am resilient. I have the power to bounce back from any situation. Yes, you do, and I do too. And we're gonna make it through this together. Thank you for joining me. So connect those hands together at your heart. Take one powerful deep breath in and let it go. Once again, thank you so much for joining me. And I hope to see you again very soon. Namaste.